Welcome back. Back with another banger. It's the React Files. Hope you're having a good night. If you haven't already, please take a second just to smash that like. Subscribe. Ring that notification bell. Just to make sure the algorithm knows what's up. So let's get straight to it. So I see everybody talking about how in the Paleo Hebrew language it represents the Alpha and the Omega. But what nobody's talking about is the number game that's behind it. See from 2017 to 2024, it's seven years as the seven year tribulation. See 2018, 2019, 2020, 21, two, three, and four, the seven years. Then if you add 2023 up, it also equals seven years. 2 plus 2 equals 4 plus 3 equals 7. In 2023, they also was talking about this 2030 agenda, which was exactly 7 years. And where it gets crazy is when did the war in Gaza start? On October 7th. And 7 days after that, we had the eclipse. Then if you go read the book of Revelations and you start to see how many verses had the number 7 in it without repeating itself, it's 49 which is seven times seven. Go to this website and see for yourself. Now where it gets more entertaining is 2024, you add that up, it equals eight. Hmm, wow. When is the eclipse supposed to happen? On April the 8th. Now I know I'm on to something crazy. If y'all wanna add on to it, comment below. This is a real life number game. Now let me know what y'all think about the number game behind the eclipse in the comments. Like or follow for more wisdom and stay tuned. It's getting strange. Yeah, it's definitely getting strange. It's a lot of sevens. So about that undeniable proof that I was telling you about. What proof is that you ask? Well, the proof that we actually have a binary twin solar system. It's another solar system and another sun that we are quite purposefully not being told about. Let's take a moment to recap. So in part one, I explained how this man, Samuel Hoffman, made a very important discovery. Back in 1978, he discovered our binary twin solar system and also how we actually live in an electrical universe, not gravitational. And our two solar systems actually cross paths about every 3,600 years. And this other solar system arrived just outside Earth's atmosphere back in 2009. So in order to truly understand the proof that we actually have, you first need to understand just how significant these drawings are that I share. So all of the drawings I share are created by Samuel Hoffman and what he has done is he started using a skill called remote viewing which allows him to visualize in his mind the details of these other planets. He can see their locations and colors, the moons, asteroids, crafts, etc. He can pretty much see it all and then what he does is once a month he creates a drawing of what he sees to show us what is out there. And truly, the most remarkable part of it all is his accuracy. There's nearly a hundred drawings from over the last nine years and each are completely highly accurate. And just so you know, based on all the years I have studied this information, there is no question that Samuel Hoffman is completely connected with this other solar system and what we're seeing in our sky. He is doing and seeing things that normally most people could never do or see, yet he does so with ease. So let's take a moment and look at some of the more obvious examples first. And that is the times when these planets will cut into our sunlight. Now you have to remember, these planets are currently passing between Earth and our sun. So what we see are their dark sides. They create undeniable shadows in the sky, as well as cutting out portions of our sunlight. You will notice just how repetitive all of this actually is, indicating that there are objects there causing this to happen. So now that you have a better understanding of what's happening, let's take a moment and look at a few other pictures on a deeper level. For instance, this picture here, do you notice how the sunlight has an unusual curve to it? 
That entire blue area is the shadow of a planet, the planet Isatom. And you see how it is curved into our sunlight, cutting into the sunlight and blocking portions of it. Things like this are completely normal and I see it happen almost every day. And that green orb, that is an asteroid, the green asteroid. And again, do you see how this blue area is curved into our sunlight, causing our sunlight to appear a distorted shape? This whole blue area is the shadow of a planet that is cutting into our sunlight. So now, let's pair up some of these photos with Samuel Hoffman's drawings. First here, we have a drawing that shows the yellow moon cutting into the right of our sun just like this photo has. And then to the left, again, a planet cutting into our sunlight. And remember, most of the time, Samuel Hoffman's drawings predate whatever photograph I am pairing it with, just so you know. And again, we have another great example showing a planet cutting into our sunlight, causing it to appear pinched and distorted. So this red area is the planet Isetum, more from a distance, and the blue area behind it is the shadow coming from the planet Nibiru. And as you can see, this drawing by Samuel Hoffman is completely accurate, if not identical. So do you see what I see? Thought so. And it matches the drawing, right? Yeah, this is actually the yellow moon of the planet Isatom, and currently this moon is always just to the right of our sun. So keep your eye out when you're out taking pictures for Isatom's moon now that you know where it's located. But as you can see, it's undeniably matching this drawing that was created long before this image ever actually happened. So just to clarify one thing, we are not talking about small planets in the distance that you need a telescope to see. These planets are passing just outside Earth's atmosphere, which means their atmospheres quite literally will fill our entire sky. Most of the clouds we see every day are actually clouds coming from these other planets. So I'm sure you now have a much better understanding as to what is actually happening, how close these planets are actually passing by Earth, as well as the huge significance Samuel Hoffman's drawings actually have. In the next part, I will be talking to you all about the reasons why they don't want us to know this other solar system exists, as well as all the different things they do to try to hide this away from everyone. But in the meantime, I recommend you take some time to go back and watch my older videos because I have so many great examples and different ways for you to be able to learn. Part three, coming. Yo, shout outs to Nibiru, followers anonymous. Not gonna lie, I was a skeptic at first. You know, dude closed his eyes and draw, right? Planets and stuff like that. But then when you see the photos, compared to his drawings, it's like a whole nother story. It's like, oh snap, you know? Some people do have gifts. This is one hell of a gift. Stop eating when the sun is setting. When you chew, chew until it becomes a liquid. Your digestive system can't digest chunks of food. The sun powers your digestive system and your body. When the sun is not present and you eat something, this is gonna cause problems within your digestive system. Stop mixing foods. Mixing animal flesh with potato and bread will cause the food to solidify within your stomach, leading to constipation and the birth of parasites within your body. Acne is undigested food coming through your skin. The digestive system cannot digest all of the toxins, so it has to find a way out and it comes through the skin. Your cells are electric, your brain is electric, your central nervous system is electric, and you are electromagnetic. The body runs off electricity. It is an electrical machine. 
Therefore, your body and your cells needs to be charged by electric food, which is grown under the electric sun. Sun's rays crystallize within the food that is grown underneath the sun. This is why you can see the glowing aura of an apple compared to a slice of flesh. This is dead. You do not want dead things within your body. It will not charge you. Your teeth are not made to rip open flesh. Veganism rearranged is saving me. And your intestines are not like a lion's or a dog's. All the legends in the past knew this and this is why they were all vegan. Shout out to Revival of Wisdom. That was a good one. Make sure y'all check him out. He made a good point. Mixing up the meat, the bread, and the fries. Yo, the shit makes a lot of sense. You know, with the sun, don't eat while the sun is going down. You know, after a while, but that was crazy with the acne, though. You know, like, damn, bro. Makes me think about going vegan, like, right now. Where are you from? China. China. Where are you from? India. India. Where are you from? China. China. Georgia. 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 Where are you from? India. India. China. 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 Where are you from? Georgia. Georgia. Where are you from? China. 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 Where are you from? Ecuador. Ecuador. Colombia. The number Guys, I'm in 1998. As you can tell behind me, I'm at Radio Shack. Let me show you something. Let me light it up with my flashlight here. Radio Shack, you see that? Radio Shack. I'm not lying. All the letters are here. I came all the way to 1998 just so I could respond to that comment. I'm here. To End of the video, I'm going to show you something else that's going to absolutely blow your mind. 1998, check this out. Check it out. This is right across the street from the Radio Shack. A payphone. A freaking payphone, guys, just like you wanted to see. These don't exist anymore. You put your quarters in that slot, and those numbers down there are there for you to dial your phone number that you're going to call. I mean, how do you deny this, guys? The holy grail, pretty much. I'm literally here. 1998 guys check it out shout out to Jim official went back to 1998 just to answer a comment seen a radio shack a payphone hey Jim go to 1996 and tell Tupac not to go to Vegas we are now officially in the middle of the shift and what's happening is the old world is pulling on the new world and that effect that is going on up there trickles down here to the earth. So you have this spiritual battle that is taking place. At the same time, the physical world is being removed. You may notice recently that you keep losing items around the house or your belongings just keep disappearing and reappearing. This is the new normal. A lot of us are falling back on our family and friends. Even couples that have been together for years, they are finally breaking up. This is because of the shift that is happening. It's all about your conscious and vibration now. You have a left path and a right path. Your left path will be those who are still stuck in the third dimension. They are still stuck in this material realm and they cannot think outside the box. Some souls come here and get trapped in this prison, but your whole goal is to ascend. You must break this mental lock and go higher. Now the path on the right, these would be all your people who are trying to grow and are shifting. They are always trying to expand their knowledge. They don't have this big ego and think they know it all. They love to grow. Now you must remember, we are all energy. Energy is everything. We are just living a human experience. The energy within is more important than your meat suit. You must continue to grow mentally. It's you that carry the torch for your family. You carry the torch for younger generations, and you must make the ascension and become an ascended master. You have a choice, we all do, and you must learn yourself before you can learn anything else. 
Shout out to Supreme Energy. You know, he's pretty much saying what the Burrow follower Anonymous was saying. You know, with the realities clashing and, you know, one thing he said was it's hard for them to think outside the box. Like revival of wisdom. So, you know, you start to put it all together for yourself. Right? And you're able to come to your own conclusion. Think about this for a minute. If your God is all-knowing, omniscient, omnipotent, all-loving, never changing, and all these terminologies that they like to tell you, and you understand that is to be a supposed fact, never question it. But then at the same time, you can be quote unquote cast into a lake of fire for all eternity for punishment and torment for sins that supposedly according to that same book and text, you had committed before the foundation of the earth. In other words, you were born a heathen, you were born a sinner, you were born this and born that. You're told that you're this person and that you're that person and you're so evil and then you're coming out of the womb as this evil entity before you even have a chance to for form your very first thoughts when in true reality, it's a big fear factor. And all you're doing is trying to save your own skin by following the rituals and hoping that in the end, it was accurate. You just took a hook, line and sinker and said, you know what, this is what I gotta do because everybody told me I had to do it. And if I don't do it, I'm gonna suffer for eternity. So this is a big part of why I do what I do. It's about education, it's about awakening, it's about showing people that before you jump head first into something and stay with it for the rest of your life, maybe you should take a pause and drop some of that fear and start digging a little bit deeper. The greatest takeaway from that is to do your own research. Don't take what nobody say as also oh, be all man go dig for it yourself get it from the mud why isn't the book of enoch in the bible if enoch is mentioned in the bible enoch is mentioned in the bible as a marker pay attention uh an old testament marker if you will but the book of enoch if you've read it uh is not uh, scripture we we'll deal is with this. history uh, and it's a very, very dark history uh, of something that happened uh, before the Great Flood. It is mentioned by Jude, who uh, yeah, in Jude 6 says, Jude. And the angels which kept not their first estate, mm -hmm. uh, but left their own habitation, mm -hmm. he hath preserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Those angels are out of business. Their story can be accessed, but the spiritual uh, gain, that is, a spiritual lesson has gained what? from what? studying uh, the fallen about? angels, uh, it is probably best left to the scholars or to best someone left to the who has scholars. exceptional Don't touch interests it. Mm. in the old world. So, Shalom Israel and to the Gentiles in the truth of Yehoshua Hanetzeri. You see these guys, they just come and they say a few words and they sound uh, eloquent. Stay away from it. Let it be with the scholars. Who made anyone a scholar? Who made you a scholar? So you're saying we should stay away from the books of Enoch. Why don't they answer these questions? Why do we have all through the scriptures references that the uh, New Testament uh, authors, Yehoshua himself, and in the Old Testament, all referring to Enoch. Why don't we talk about how Enoch is in the Dead Sea Scrolls? Why don't we talk about how Enoch was and has been in the oldest Bible put together by the Ethiopian church? Why don't we talk about how Enoch was left out by the King James um, translations? It was part of the old apocrypha. They got rid of it, you know, um, because they just felt like it. No, book of feelings. And where where was Jude reading from? This is the brother of the Messiah. Where was he reading from? Where was Paul reading from when he speaks about Melchizedek? He's reading from the second book of Enoch. They don't want you to read these truths because you will go into a higher place with the Most High. There is so much evidence that Enoch is scripture. And you're one of the greatest... Uh, things we can read about the book of Enoch 
he calls on the Messiah and he sees the Messiah and he calls him Ben Adam. He calls him the son of man. That's where we get the town from son of man. It was Enoch who saw him first. So Hanuk, the righteous prophet, and he had written 365 books also just for the righteous. Most churchgoers are going to deny this, but religion is actually science told improperly. I pontificate the subject of astrotheology and syncretism, bringing together all fields of knowledge and wisdom and showing the interrelatedness of all things. Syncretism is the opposite of division and covers all the topics that are neglected in religious discussions. Syncretism is conducted through a universal truth school at the Academy of Syncretism Society teaching ancient cosmology, sexual symbolism in world religions, electromagnetism as it relates to religion, foundations of modern day religion, secret societies, world mysteries, ancient symbolism, sacred geometry, occult emblems, hidden Bible teachings, and the story that your church doesn't want you to know about, which are the secret societies that are influencing the world events today. These sciences allow a person to develop wisdom and enlightenment far beyond what the world has to offer. Astrotheological education focuses on the physical application of syncretism. The belief in the corporeal health of our anatomy is foundational on the path of ascending your true spirit. The Academy offers transformative recovery and a wide spectrum of modalities designed to facilitate balance and vitality on many levels. Astrotheology, natural science, astrology, reclaiming dominion, breaking the fiction of religion, science and law, and the holy royal science is a discipline based on the workings of the Maseroth of the Zodiacs in the solar system, which is the science of as above, so below. As a syncretist, it's vital to understand spiritual discipline of syncretism and how the three major religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, all require a book, the Torah, the Holy Bible, and the Quran. This science proves that these scriptures are New Age documents. The Discovery Channel and National Geographic always talk about how the Holy Scriptures are a codex because it truly is an encoded message. It's the greatest story ever told. The Bible is part astrology, part alchemy, part folklore, and part theurgy. The Old Testament is Egyptian, and the New Testament is Greek, to make it simple. It's important to remember that there are over 4,000 documented religions in the world, and there are 200 different styles of Christian denominations alone. And it's crucial to remind yourself that there's a staggering 45,000 registered denominational churches according to the Center for the Study of Global Christianity. The story of Jesus has been debunked. There are people who have PhDs in studying the Dead Sea Scrolls and doctoral work in astrology and astrotheology, such as Claremont School of Theology in California. Okay, follow along if you guys want to learn about syncretism. So that's what you call it, syncretism. You know, the astrology with the zodiac, you know, pretty much all that revival of wisdom, you know, that was a quick breakdown of how we got to that, right? The part we missed, just the breakdown of it all. But yeah, I see it quite clear. What you think, you know? Let me know in the comments down below. We were all in heaven at one point, and just like Lucifer falling in love with himself and getting kicked out of heaven and fell in consciousness, we fell in consciousness. So we fell in consciousness. Now the only way we can get back up there is if we rise through love, and that was the only way to bring our consciousness back up. These stories are about us. We were we were in heaven. This is the key there. We were in heaven. We fell in consciousness down to Malkuth, which is earth. But how do we rise in consciousness? Matthew 10, 16, we need to be innocent as doves, but wise as serpents. That's because the snake, the snake goes up to be an eagle. So the root chakra to the crown chakra, 144, the 144,000 go to heaven. This is a frequency, this is a vibration. You gotta raise your vibrational frequency. The whole point is to raise your vibration. You have this kundalini energy that falls and goes back up. Depending on your hormones, you have the sun and you have the moon. You have the Horus's eye and you have the moon. Horus, moon, hormones. And then every, just like how women have a menstrual cycle, men have a cycle too. You have three, the, 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 three, the three gifts from the wise men. That is from your pineal gland. You have your dopamine, serotonin, melatonin, and it falls, creates the chrism oil, rises back up to Christ consciousness. This, like society has basically external 
externalized everything of what you are, everything that is sacred about you. They've externalized it. You are the Holy Grail. Your neck is in your head. That's the chalice. You have the fountain of youth, which is the, the cerebral spinal, uh, spinal fluid that falls down in consciousness and comes back up. You have Pandora's box, which is your heart. They make you externalize all of these gifts that you have. So the whole point is to raise your vibration out of the carnal mind into your third heaven, the three levels of heaven. That's why in Mormonism, you hear the three levels of heaven. You hear celestial, terrestrial, telestial. Only those in the celestial kingdom will live in God's presence. And that's why veganism is a must. You can't be eating these low vibrational foods that make you more instinctual. You need to raise an out of the carnal mind into your third heaven, into your third eye, into your, your, your fourth dimensional being, your light being. Jacob's ladder and at the top was heaven. Like I was watching a video on Kevin Gates and he was talking about how he did a 40 day water fast and he traveled, he astral traveled to the celestial court. We are literally just CO2 constituents. We're just light and vibrations. So they say we're looking at the universe through a peephole, a peephole that you put a key through. So if you're looking, you're only going to see what that peephole allows you to see. But there's different frequencies and vibrations. And that's what we're going to call CO2 constituents, at, which is nothing but light and vibration. And that's where everything truly exists. So low frequency light becomes matter and high frequency matter becomes light. So you need to raise your vibration through love, good eating, eating the right foods. Raise your frequency, you become illuminated, and then you go from matter to becoming an angel. And that's why you got to do everything with love, because high frequency, short, fast wavelengths activates many more DNA coding sites. That's what love does. The highest form of worship in Luciferianism is the inversion of God, and that's with fear. It activates few DNA coding, keeps you bonded, it, it shackles you to this construct. Fear literally just prevents you from becoming illuminated. Wow, what a breakdown. One thing I got from that was fear keeps you from being illuminated that's why you can't have no fear that's why they always say it yeah that was dope that was dope it was deep it's fascinating just like revival of wisdom you know how we do over here let me know in the comments down below what you think I finally understand why all these celebrities are dying, bro. And people that are influencers. And I meet women with millions of followers, bro, and they seem happy on their Instagram. Bro, they're suicidal in real life, bro. They talk about killing themselves every fucking day. I went to every doctor in the world, the same way Michael Jackson did, the same way Robin Williams did. They had the best therapist in the world, bro, but they couldn't save them because what they were suffering from wasn't physical or mental. Yes, there's mental illness. Yes, there's physical illness, but there's also spiritual disease. And if you're trying to cure your soul with a physical remedy, it will not work. So a lot of these people that are dying, when you're that famous, there's no way the eye doesn't go on. This is why so many celebrities do drugs to numb the pain. They take psychotropic drugs that are not working because if they work, they would become normal again. They can't. It's a spiritual disease. They're under demonic attack, which is what the evil eye is, to bring them to a point of such sorrow that they kill themselves because there's nothing more that that realm loves, that the evil ones of them, remember they're not all evil, than a human being taking their own life. When a human being takes their own life, it's like telling the creator, this test is over. It's like if I gave you a math test for one hour, so you have an hour to complete geometry. In the first five minutes, you could turn your paper over and say, I'm done. You fail. I'm sure everyone's familiar who this man is, the founder of the World Economic Forum. Klaus Schwab and his minions put together these books. In 2016, he published The Fourth Industrial Revolution. In 2018, he published Shaping the Future of the Fourth Industrial Revolution. In 2020, he published COVID-19, The Great Reset. And as a sequel, he published The Great Narrative for a Better Future the same year. And then in 2021, he published Stakeholder Capitalism. So he's talking about the Fourth Industrial Revolution, which is AI, how it's blurring the lines between what's real and what's not real. 2021's Stakeholder Capitalism, he talks about capitalism now being called talentism because anybody can work, even children. Now this is Richard Baldwin. He did a TED talk on YouTube in 2018 talking about globalization 4.0, which is from global trades and goods to global trades and digital services, similar to this stakeholder capitalism. In 2016, he published The Great Convergence, Information, Technology, and the New Globalization. And in 2019, he published The Globotics Upheaval, Globalization, and the Future of Work. So it's globalization using robotics. For he talks about telepresence labor. 
Richard Baldwin. Telepresence labor is where you work from home, you're controlling a robot. So this is remote robotics, telepresence labor. We are up against the fourth industrial revolution, globalization 4.0, globotics, remote robotics, because you're controlling these robots through VR and blue light halt hormone production. Now in a smart city, humans become less smart because the technology becomes more smart. We become dependent. We tell time through the internet, but without the internet, we don't know the time. We don't even know where we are. We need to learn celestial navigation again. This is the Moonshot Project in Japan, and this is to be achieved by 2050. And their goal number one is overcoming limitations of body, brain, space, and time. So basically, virtual reality, augmented reality, and extended reality. Here's a little picture of the super smart cities that they want to create. This robot here is being remotely steered by someone at home. This man here is wearing a robotic suit that helps you lift heavy objects. This is a 2021 white paper on science, technology, and innovation towards realizing society 5.0. The car is self-driving. Health tech, fintech, biotech, food tech, agri-tech, care tech. The Society 1.0 is the hunter-gatherer society. 2.0 is the agrarian society. 3.0 is the industry society. 4.0 is the information society. And 5.0 is the super smart society. The fourth industrial revolution is digital transformation, the cyber physical systems, AI, IoT, Internet of Things, blockchain, etc. This is what they intend for us, for a better future. But it takes away our humanity. This is supposed to be human centered when it's the complete opposite. Because our vision is minimized, is decreased. It's not maximizing human potential. When the technology gets smarter, we are not maximizing ourselves, body, mind, and soul. No, oh, that was very informative. I've never even heard of Moonshot. That makes sense. The smarter the city, the dumber the human. Yeah, that's crazy. Jesus and Satan do not exist. It's a metaphor for the war between your consciousness and your body. Religion is a scam. Your body desires lust, food, and power, but your consciousness wants love, expression, intuition, and wisdom. They've externalized the truth so that you think that you are your body, which is hell, heal. The church is a business, and it's to keep you in your lower states of consciousness so that they can control you. Every religious text has an exoteric and an esoteric meaning. Exoteric is what is taught to the public, which is external. The esoteric is the internal teachings of the scriptures. Jesus and Satan, Horus and Set, the devil and the angel on your shoulder. The reason why religions have so much in common is because they're all different ways of metaphorically talking about the battle between your consciousness and your physical body. They want you to believe that you're physical, to hide all the different dimensions of yourself, mental, astral and etheric. When you give praise to external gods with outside of you, you are giving your energy into the astral plane. They're literally summoning your energy within their spirit realm because of religion. When you empty the mind and focus on your internal self, you attract energy to you, which can be used to create your life. We are all God in disguise. Our consciousness is God, but the body is of this world. Why do you think the side of your head regions are called temples? Because the head region is the temple of God, the temple of your consciousness. This book will tell you everything you need to know. The link is in my book. Arrival of Wisdom be breaking it down. So why do you think they call temples on the side of your head? Boom. I like how in his book, each chakra has the right frequency. Right? Associated with the color. And that's fascinating. See the O, see, look, see, see them two that going down, one by itself with the joint, look, watch, see, the joint going by itself, the see, going by itself, the joint, y'all see that, for the earth if you see it, now, I'm going to show you that they, the, they decide to destroy, because as you can see here, don't look at the indentation. 
See this? Don't look at the indentation. Like I said, I, I touched these. Don't look at that indentation no more. Look at the space between the indentation. And you'll see a three. Right? Follow me. You'll see a Z. Look in Jean with an E. You see that? You see those letterings. It starts popping out to you like bubble lettering. You'll even see a mound little thing, John, right here. And mountain ranges in the back. You see that? This is a map. You don't, you don't go by the indentations and read it. And you came up with the whole Enlil and Enki story and got Bill Carson running around talking about Enlil and Enki Anunnaki. I'm showing you that the true Anunnaki is here. And I will show you how to read the God languages. And this is it. You don't. I ain't even gonna cap. I started looking at the the lines. I seen it. It started to pop out like, like yeah. I see what he's saying with bubble lettering. I get it. M m three dimensional, right? That's what he's trying to say. You know, they come out. You just gotta focus your eye on the right part of it, right? Yo, that's crazy. Shout outs to the Earth Speak. Yeah, he was calling out Billy Carson's and all them cats. They need to have a sit down. See this? Canaan. This is the hierarchy that you live in, bro. You don't fucking even, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Baal worship, ball worship. That's why we are in globalism. You worship the ball. The Canaanites. Then underneath that, you got the pharaohs, kings of Babylon, Roman Empire, Judea, fucking the Knights Templar, Masons, the Jesuits. These are the people. This is you. You know. You know when you see fucking uh, Jay Z and Beyonce and all the fucking people that sold their soul for the fame. That's where they are. You don't even fucking really see these people up here. You don't see them. They're just fucking. They're they're doing whatever the fuck they want. They're laughing at us. And so you're over here thinking, oh, I'm supposed to eat meat. Meat. You gotta eat a little meat because there's a speck of fucking nutrition that you need to have. No, you're fucking. You don't know what you're talking about because it only gets more satanic. The higher up you go, the more satanic it gets. Totally makes sense. Where's the fucking world hierarchy? I know you guys have seen this photo before. See all this shit. This is us right here. All of this. And then you get up to this. Netflix, Hollywood, education, legal, government, medical, religion, football. They run us. Unless you can see it for what it is. You see the corporations. And then you got all this other shit. The banks, the world institutions, the fucking control. Then you see the fucking... You got the, the Masons. The Vatican, the Jesuit order. And this is where this is where we are right now. When you when you understand what this is, you basically are bringing this frequency here to combat what's going on, because it's all fucking inversion. I have to do it myself. I know it's not. Thank you for the warning. I was ready for him, but it's much easier if the cops do it. Don't we agree? Huh? What a great job. That's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed tonight's rabbit hole. If you haven't already, please take a second just to smash that like. Subscribe. Ring that notification bell just to make sure the algorithm knows what's up. So what are we gonna do, y'all? That's right. Run these numbers up. Thanks again. Until next time.